Hello everyone. Uh, let's move on to the discussion on uh, module 4 data communication. So this is uh, part 1 of the Lee video lecture dedicated for module 4. So, so far in uh, data communication we saw topics like uh, in module 1 we covered the fundamentals like the different signal signal uh, I mean uh, analog versus digital signal their properties even data signaling like that uh, I mean the properties of the sine wave uh, but um, the amplitude frequency like that we de defined all the uh, fundamental terminologies actually and uh, then we move on to module to where we saw in detail uh, the different uh, transmission media including the coaxial uh, twisted pair and fiber optic cable and their properties uh, like that we continued uh, module 2 and also that uh, wireless transmission uh, techniques and then in module 3 we saw uh, different uh, uh, signal encoding techniques like how uh, digital data or analog data can be converted to digital signal or analog signal uh, the uh, the technology behind it how that signal encoding is done and different uh, methods like that we covered module 3 now in module 4 uh, so we are moving on to our discussion on a topic called multiplexing and this module 4 is mainly uh, dealing with uh, multiplexing techniques so first we will s uh, see what is uh, the uh, meant by multiplexing and then we will move on to different techniques available for it okay so let's uh, start with the um, introduction to multiplexing uh, whenever the bandwidth of a medium linking two devices is greater than the bandwidth needs of the devices which are connected to the um, particular link or particular medium the link can be shared okay so it is something like this uh, you have a uh, common medium uh, to that medium you are uh, connecting in different devices right device one device two etc you are connecting to a particular medium okay now uh, suppose that uh, the, the, in, the individual requirement of each device which are connected to the medium is uh, somewhat very uh, small data rate right, compared to the uh, capacity of the media or uh, what is the maximum data rate that can be supported by the medium so if you are connecting a single device to the medium sometimes the device may be having very less data rate requirement and the medium will be providing you uh, more bandwidth right and in that time uh, what will happen most of the resources uh, that is uh, nothing but uh, the bandwidth of the uh, particular medium uh, which is being allocated for your communication will be wasted because that device is not generating uh, data um, in such a way that it can fully utilize the capacity that is being provided by the medium so that is the situation so what we can do is uh, in such a scenario you can instead of uh, connecting a single device to the medium you can connect more than one device to the medium so that everyone can share uh, the bandwidth uh, that is being uh, provided by the medium so that is the idea so how we can uh, efficiently uh, share the resources to improve efficiency efficient use of the resources which is being um, allocated in a uh, given communication system so that is the idea so multiplexing is the set of techniques uh, that allows the simultaneous transmission of multiple signal across a data link so data link so some terminologies that we will see here means the common medium which we are having and uh, how uh, a number of devices which are connected to this common medium can share the bandwidth that is provided by the medium so and the set, uh, set of techniques which we are using for that is coming under the terminology multiplexing so if the bandwidth uh, of a link that is the uh, outgoing link or the medium is greater than the bandwidth needs of the devices connected to it then definitely the bandwidth uh, that is being provided by the medium will be wasted right so we should uh, we should not move to such a situation uh, rather we should be able to share the resources or we should be able to connect maximum number of devices to the medium so that its utilization is maximum so an, an efficient system that maximizes the utilization of all resources including bandwidth so bandwidth is one of the resources but if you are looking at a, a network there are a number of other resources also that is being provided um, for uh, achieving the communication right so uh, one of the most uh, uh, peculiar um, resources is of course the bandwidth of the medium that is being allocated 
and how we can uh, utilize the resource including the bandwidth maximum okay uh, which is the most uh, okay okay bandwidth which is the most precious resource of course is needed in data communication and multiplexing provides such a technique now a common uh, application of multiplexing is in long haul communication means that uh, backbone network you know uh, if you are looking at uh, uh, the network communication which is uh, which you are um, personal computer or a desktop machine is having the machine is connected to a particular cable that only what you are seeing and you know uh, at a different different places in your campus many uh, machines are being connected to the internet and you are seeing a particular cable and all these cables are uh, say connected to a common switch uh, some common connector device uh, can be a switch or a router whatever it is and from there uh, a particular cable which is of more capacity that will carry all the information together and it will travel for some distance and again see at that point uh, many such um, higher uh, bandwidth mediums will be meeting and from that point everybody will be moving through a kind of common uh, backbone network I, I hope you can visualize it say different devices being connected through individual cables and all of them are um, getting connected um, to a particular point and from there a common connection is emerging and same situation see uh, happening in some other department uh, or uh, some other institution and like that a hundred of such uh, or um, uh, I mean lakhs of such uh, connections will be coming and all of them will be um, merged together at a common point and finally this common backbone network is supposed to carry the information from all these uh, communicating devices to some other place maybe some other continent or somewhere else. Um, most probably this backbone network uh, will be uh, wired maybe in uh, under undersea uh, like that so um, it could be some fiber optic uh, cable or whatever it is um, the requirement is it should provide maximum uh, say bandwidth then only it can carry all the information together so at that point definitely we need that multiplexing uh, means how you are going to share the total bandwidth that is being provided by the uh, backbone network okay so that is and uh, that is what is meant here by long haul communication so that means the backbone network are actually um, is from carrying your data and traveling for long distance right so in that case uh, the say the trunks on uh, long haul network are of high capacity fiber uh, is what is preferred or it could be coaxial or uh, microwave links the backbone net, uh, link okay and these links can carry large amount of voice and uh, data transmission simultaneously of course using some kind of sharing mechanism and uh, multiplexing is uh, such a technique okay so that uh, the uh, it's it's an umbrella terminology that is um, all the technique uh, which are used to, uh, used for sharing the bandwidth that is available for a medium is together called a multiplexing now uh, how you can divide a link or a communication media into different channels so that each channel can carry information being transmitted by a particular device or or a particular uh, input link something like this so uh, it is like the here uh, we have a link uh, which is being divided into n channels i taken this uh, picture from your frozen textbook uh, some printing mistake uh, is there uh, so uh, you be careful so here we have a particular link okay and that is being divided into say n channels and each uh, means inside this medium we have uh, you can imagine some kind of uh, horizontal division okay and each division i'm calling as a channel and uh, it is being divided into n channels now uh, see this many devices say uh, each suppose uh, a particular device is connected at this line okay say n input lines are coming and this input lines may be directly connected to the uh, particular pc or a desktop or an individual machine or it may be connected to a uh, switch and from that switch there are uh, further um, connections which are going to different different devices so like that this um, is just mentioned like lines only and what we are trying to say the information which is being carried uh, by all these lines are uh, multiplexed together into this uh, common media so that is the idea and this particular line may be connected to a single machine or it could be connected to a common connector uh, which further connected to a different individual device or you can assume uh, to the next level of hierarchy also
okay so it could be anything so at some point this may be your backbone network or it may be the uh, particular medium that is being coming out from the switch of your organization or router of your organization anyway it is something having higher capacity than these individual ones okay so what we are trying to do we are trying to share the capacity of this particular uh, link by means of multiplexing technique so there will be a multiplexer the technique being used by the multiplexer that we will see uh, mainly we have two types of multiplexing scheme frequency division and uh, uh, time division multiplexing and variation of that like that so using certain techniques uh, this information uh, is multiplexed into uh, this particular common link okay so this is a kind of many to one communication right in digital electronics you may so multiplexer the same multiplexer only but uh, the how this many are uh, simply you can view it like uh, so here some signal is coming say zero one like that different voltages in digital you studied like that okay and from all these um, individual connection there is a common outgoing link uh, so uh, at any time it will be the outgoing link will be carrying information from uh, out of this uh, n input line and which uh, input line is to be taken and uh, moved to this uh, common um, shared link is being determined by some kind of select line so that kind of a uh, an, um, concept we saw in digital but here the same concept only but uh, instead of that uh, each of these link are um hack carrying some information some sequence of bits like that you can imagine and finally all of them want to share the medium so it is like this here there is no concept of select line and all from all these in uh, means uh, everybody uh, should get an equal share of the medium so that is the idea so one uh, thing one thing you can imagine so in is like in a round robin manner uh, allow some portion of the information from this line then another uh, set of information from this line like that you keep on providing a chance for every each and every input line in a round drop in fashion or uh, you allow everyone simultaneously like uh, what you can do is the common link you divide it into n sub parts uh, you know um, say it's a uh, what is the total bandwidth or the range of frequency available divide it into different small small frequency bands and uh, for each link uh, provide a particular band uh, permanently like that so the second concept i explained is uh, what is happening in frequency division multiplexing where the first concept like uh, um, everybody is getting some equal um, equal share and the total bandwidth will be provided for the device one device two etc but in a round robin fashion something like that so that is the idea used in time division multiplexing okay so that's a broad category anyway you got an idea uh, the thing is that somehow everybody should get an equal share of the medium um, and the one which is used for that is the mux or the multiplexer and at the receiver side we have the uh, demultiplexer device that will do the opposite phenomenon where uh, kind of one to many okay mm -hmm. here it is many to one one to many so uh, we have a common uh, link or medium from there uh, we are taking the information and we are providing it correctly uh, to the uh, re receiving machine so that is the idea mm -hmm. okay so uh, with respect to the previous figure the terminologies are explained here in a multiplexed system n lines uh, share a bandwidth of on link so see these terminologies are i taken from that uh, william stalling's textbook here you can see i am uh, when i am presenting something i referred both textbook and uh, from both the best part i taken uh, so if you are looking at the terminologies and all uh, so here a line they mean um, by the uh, the input line okay input line like uh, from the devices this n input lines are being multiplexed to a common outgoing outgoing link okay so that outgoing link or outgoing medium which is being shared uh, for that they are using the term link and uh, the, the inputs uh, which are coming to that common link is uh, uh, given the name lines okay but if you are looking at forosan it may be a different terminology anyway anyway you got the idea the terminology may vary from uh, textbook uh, to textbook the figure shows a basic format of a multiplexer system the lines that is the input line on the left di uh, left direct their transmission streams into a multiplexer or mux which combines them into a single stream a kind of many to one communication at the receiving end the stream 
that is a single input stream is fed into a demultiplexer which separates the stream back into its component uh, transmissions uh, that is kind of onto many uh, splitting and directs them to their corresponding uh, lines at the receiver side okay the individual connections so in the figure the word link refers to the physical path which is being shared okay, the medium and the word channel refers to the portion of the link that carries transition between a given pair of lines so input line at the sender side and the uh, i mean at the receiver side that uh, you, you can see that um, common channel is being split into different lines so uh, for, um, suppose say it, uh, eight input lines are coming eight to by one multiplexer is uh, connected and at the receiver side one by eight d multiplexer is being connected so uh, from the input side line one and at the receiver side line one like that there is um, how many input lines are there that many um, lines are there at the receiver side also so between a particular pair of line from the sender side and receiver side um, they when they are trying to communicate uh, the portion of the link that is being uh, the part of the link or okay if we are seeing it in a horizontal way means the total bandwidth you are dividing into n uh, horizontal channels say so uh, that kind of a division is what they are using uh, the term channel uh, between a pair of lines okay so hope these three uh, terminologies are clear otherwise see the figure so this is the lines lines uh, whenever it is mentioned uh, that means the input line this is the uh, link and which is being divided into say channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 like that or it can divide in a vertical way also and that both ways of division we will see Mm, okay so simply right now you can assume uh, you can uh, imagine this uh, horizontal division okay and uh, say this particular first uh, portion uh, divided portion of the link suppose i am giving uh, for the communication from this particular line to this particular line so between a pair of line uh, i have a portion of the uh, common link that is being shared called a channel and that division can be done horizontally or vertically vertically and we will see how it is done okay so that about the terminology hope now everything is clear uh, one link can have uh, say n subdivision uh, n channels and now why we are using multiplexing and uh, the wide, widespread use of multiplexing in data communication can be explained in the following why i am mentioning everything is because sometimes they may ask you such a question why multiplexing you should be able to answer it and uh, it's just i pointed only whatever things we explained i just uh, mentioned of course uh, the higher data rate uh, the more cost effective the higher the data rate the more cost effective the transition facility uh, right it is like uh, because of sharing we are able to achieve it for example suppose i have a fiber optic cable with a very good bandwidth okay and i am connecting say a single device to that which is the requirement of that device is very very less compared to what is being provided by the fiber optic cable then uh, that particular device is responsible to pay for the full bandwidth because even though it is not in need of that much bandwidth uh, we are giving it because there is no other option suppose there is no multiplexing okay uh, the entire bandwidth you will be allocating to a particular user and the user is supposed to pay for that whole bandwidth okay uh, but if it is divided actually it is dividable because that user is not in need of that much okay so simply divide it and give a portion of it to uh, that particular device then uh, user then he will happily take it because now it is only a portion so that uh, it will be of less cost so that is the idea as the data rate is higher the more cost effective will be the uh, transmission facility data rate is higher means the data rate is um, it is not like uh, the utilized portion of the data rate like that okay so some um, sometimes you may be having enough data rate but you are not utilizing it that is meaningless uh, that is not cost effective the how much data rate you are able to achieve all together by sharing your medium that will uh, 
reduce the cost being spent by each and every individual so, so that is the thing so that is for a given application and over a given distance the cost per kilobits per second declines with an increase in the data rate of the transition facility how it is being declined by making that sharing possible so similarly the cost of transition and receiving equipment per kilobits per second declines with the uh, increasing data rate uh, same concept okay so um, you have to uh, so in multiplex mainly we are looking at the medium only and similarly uh, means at the center side receiver side we have the dev different devices are, are being connected right and also um, on the way this router will be there switch will be there because if uh, this uh, to a particular router you are uh, connecting say 100 lines instead of that you are connecting say uh, five lines so that device can perform well when there are five lines uh, so how you achieve that five line uh, actually uh, you are having 100 lines out of that 100 line 20 20 you multiplexed say into a single line so that out this 100 line is finally converging to um, 20 i am grouping five lines so these five lines are supposed to be handled by the router so that the router will be doing it efficiently in a cost effective way so like that so in different angle you have to think uh, its use uh, not only singly sharing the even the workload of the individual uh, routers or other intermediate devices uh, on the way in our network and most individual data communicating devices require relatively modest data rate support and that is another thing if you are looking at an individual uh, device um, it may be your personal computer or a particular machine being whatever it is desktop or the data requirement of your machine will be very 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 small compared to uh, what is being provided by the medium okay so for example for uh, uh, many terminal and uh, personal computer application that do not involve much web access and intensive graphics a data rate between 9600 bits per second and 64 kilobits per se uh, second is generally adequate okay so no typical uh, requirement of a personal uh, or a computer or a terminal device with uh, very less um, uh, web access and uh, or um, not involving any web access or um, intensive graphics so uh, the data rate of that device will be very less okay and in that situation um, the underlying okay medium if you are looking at fiber optic uh, medium or a better version of coaxial or uh, twisted pair uh, medium definitely the capacity or the bandwidth being provided by that medium will be very high so um, Accordingly, if you are uh, asking your individual system also, you also, um, I, um, as, as I am having a um, cable with uh, this much bandwidth, I am asking like, uh, I don't want this person a computer, instead of that I need a supercomputer, something like that, because then only I can utilize the uh, capacity of the medium. That, that should not be the case. Uh, the individual requirement of each and every um, device being connected to the medium should be less uh, compared to... Um, means that is a general scenario because uh, that is uh, otherwise it is not affordable for the individual users right and you should be able to share the uh, common uh, medium capacity also okay uh, hope you got an idea uh, where this multiplexing is being used <coughs> okay now uh, so this uh, categories of multiplexing uh, some space is missing here <laughs> okay uh, so multiplexing this is a broad classification and further classification now uh, variations also you can think but in textbook mainly they are dealing with uh, the three types of multiplexing the frequency division multiplexing wavelength division multiplexing and time division multiplexing normally this time division multiplexing is supporting uh, the digital information where this frequency and wavelength the division dealing with analog data so this uh, again this wavelength division is a variation of frequency division so mainly we will discuss frequency division and time division and we will see what, how it uh, wavelength division multiplexing is working as a variation to the frequency division multiplexing concept we uh, will be discussed so uh, just an overview uh, as i already told you and that kind of this is the common uh, medium you are having and what you done you divided your medium into uh, in a um, in a horizontally you divide like this okay into different channels so channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 so totally we have a bandwidth of this much okay say your uh, the this range of frequency we are having and out of this 
uh, this to this uh, a particular frequency band we provided for uh, channel 1 another band for channel 2 like that we divided the total frequency into six parts for example and this is central frequency is what is mentioned here this is uh, centered around f1 this is centered around f2 like that and uh, this is the time that means the duration of the time a device is getting access to the medium so what does it mean every device will get access to the medium all the time okay but how much it is able to um, access only a portion of the bandwidth okay so individual device the bandwidth that is provided by the medium uh, is being compromised here mm. So, if your requirement is only this much, then it is okay. But uh, suppose a particular device on the way or uh, some out of the six, say four devices are having a requirement more than this, then it is supposed to adjust with this. That kind of a difficulty we are having. But when it comes to time division multiplexing, we are doing that division. This is what I meant by. But we will see how this is done exactly uh, when we are discussing this topic in detail. Uh, we are uh, dividing like this vertically we will divide like this and it is like uh, channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 5 6 again channel 1 like that it will repeat so what is happening is the whole bandwidth of the communication medium will be provided to the first device okay but only for a small duration of time in in a kind of round robin manner okay and after this uh, duration of time now we are compromising with the time okay after this much time um, again um, for next uh, few milliseconds of time or seconds of time whatever it is another few unit of time the whole bandwidth is being shared by channel 2 okay and after six uh, devices being shared the channel in a round robin way again the chance of one will come like that so now every uh, individual device which are being connected has to wait but we are not actually letting them to wait we will uh, do um, we will uh, perform this division in such a way that the devices are not supposed to wait okay and for that what we will do the total uh, bits per second uh, or the number of bits that is being transmitted by this um, common medium we will make it in such a way that uh, that is uh, greater than or equal to the sum of the uh, data rate of the individual device so in such a way otherwise every device has to wait till its next turn is coming but uh, as as soon as this much data is being sent when the next set of data is being ready this much time will uh, move on because uh, this particular channel is now the common shared medium is now providing a data rate that is uh, more than the sum of the data rate of all the devices that is idea anyway uh, we will when we are discussing this you will get a clarity on it Okay, so for the time being, this is an overall idea about uh, FDM and TDM. So, with this, uh, we will wind up part 1 of the di discussion. Now, in subsequent parts, we will see. Uh, first, we will start with the frequency division multiplexing and its features, properties, some problems, uh, everything. And then we will move on to TDM. And then, uh, okay, before TDM, we will see the wavelength division multiplexing, which is a variation of frequency division multiplexing, then TDM. The TDM itself, we have synchronous TDM, uh, statistical TDM, those variation. And some other, um, and at the end, we will end our discussion with the code division multiplexing. Okay, so that about module uh, 4. Okay, thank you.